In this tech tip video, purging the oil system on Rotax 912, 912i, and 915i series aircraft engines. Because of the dry sump and remote oil tank design of the engines, it's very important to purge the oil system when installing a new or overhauled engine and after lubrication system maintenance such as oil tank cleaning or oil line replacement. Oil purging or venting accomplishes two things. It fills the suction side of the oil system and primes the oil pump. Secondly, it releases any air trapped in the pressure side of the oil system. Most importantly, within the hydraulic lifters or tappets. Running an engine at high power settings with air trapped in the lifters can cause severe engine damage. The oil purging procedure ensures that air-free oil is supplied to all internal engine oil galleries and lifters, providing maximum wear protection upon first engine start and peak engine performance, reliability, and longevity. For demonstration on this 915 IS engine, I'll perform the purging procedure followed by a physical check of the lifters for entrapped air. Complete written instructions for oil purging can be found in the respective engine's line maintenance manual or within the latest revision of service instruction SI 912-018. Replacement valve cover o-rings are required to complete the inspection for correct purging. O-rings can be ordered separately or by kit part number 881920. This 915 IS engine has just been installed on a test stand and requires the oil system to be purged before startup. Before beginning, ensure that all oil lines are correctly and securely connected. Out from the oil tank connects to the oil cooler then to the oil pump inlet. The bottom crankcase fitting connects to in on the oil tank. 915 IS engines require two return lines from the crankcase to the oil tank. 914 and 915 I series engines also require connection from the turbo oil scavenge pump back to the oil tank. Fill the oil to the maximum level. Some of the oil volume will be used to fill the oil lines, oil cooler, and oil filter, so it's okay to add an extra half liter of oil above the maximum dipstick level. Disconnect the oil return line at the oil tank. In this case, being a 915 IS, there are two return lines. Place the open oil return lines into a clean container below the engine. Any residual oil coming through the return lines can be poured back into the oil tank, so ensure cleanliness throughout this procedure. Remove the spark plug connectors from all the spark plugs. This ensures that no spark is present during the oil purging. For easier engine rotation, remove a spark plug from each cylinder so that compression is eliminated. I'm removing the bottom spark plugs to help prevent any foreign objects entering the cylinder. If the oil lines or oil cooler are new or have been emptied of oil, and you have access to a source of compressed air, this next step can speed up the purging process. If compressed air is unavailable, this step is not mandatory and can be skipped. The opened oil return fittings on the oil tank must be plugged with an airtight cap or plug. Remove the oil tank vent line and use the fitting to pressurize the oil tank to a regulated 0.4 to 1 bar or about 6 to 15 psi. The disconnected oil tank fittings have been plugged off, but you'll hear air escaping past the oil tank lid. This is normal. The lid is not designed to be airtight. The pressure regulator will compensate for the leakage and maintain a constant pressure. I have about 10 psi or 0.7 bar. 
this pressure should be maintained through the next steps. Do not open the oil tank lid while the oil tank is under pressure. Okay, the oil tank is pressurized, ready for the next step. Turn the propeller in the direction of normal rotation, which is counterclockwise from this side of the propeller, and continue engine rotation until oil pressure is indicated. This can take anywhere from 20 to 60 engine rotations or more. With all the spark plug caps disconnected and no compression with the spark plugs removed, it's impossible for the engine to start by turning the propeller. Nevertheless, always keep safety in mind. By rotating the propeller, the oil pump is actuated, providing pressurized oil to all internal oil galleries, bearings, and hydraulic lifters. Once oil pressure is indicated, 40 psi or 2.8 bar is easily achievable, stop rotation and remove pressure from the oil tank. Keep the oil level in mind through this step. In this case, the engine was just installed and had an empty oil system. That dropped the oil level down to just below minimum on the dipstick. If the oil tank is emptied, air can be sucked into the oil system. Did you notice how the sound of the engine changed, as indicated oil pressure was achieved? I'll play it back for you. Listen for the change. The sound changes when the hydraulic lifters are provided with oil flow and they begin to fill up. With indicated oil pressure achieved and pressure removed from the oil tank, remove the temporary cap or caps from the oil tank and reconnect the oil return lines. Any residual clean oil from the oil return lines can be used to top up the oil tank level. Reinstall the spark plugs and attach all spark plug connectors and perform an oil level check procedure. This will return any residual oil in the crankcase and oil return lines back to the oil tank. Remove the oil tank lid and slowly rotate the propeller in the direction of normal rotation in order to build up pressure within the crankcase until a distinct gurgle or burp is heard at the oil tank. Top off the oil level to the max mark on the dipstick. For 914 and 915 I-Series engines, disconnect the turbo oil return line at the oil tank and route it to a clean container. The next step requires starting the engine. Take all safety precautions. Ensure all engine installation and pre-start checks are complete. Start the engine. Indicated oil pressure must occur within 5 seconds and flow from the turbo oil return line within 10 seconds of engine start. Shut down the engine and reattach the turbo oil return line using new copper gaskets. Start the engine following the aircraft manufacturer's instructions. Indicated oil pressure must occur within 5 seconds. Run the engine at around 2000 RPM for 2 minutes, then warm up the engine at 2200 to 2500 RPM until an oil temperature of 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit is reached. Shut down the engine and perform another oil level check and top off the oil tank if necessary to the max mark. The hydraulic lifters must now be individually inspected to ensure that all air has been completely purged or vented from the oil circuit. Allow the engine to cool down before this inspection. Remove the valve cover from cylinder number 1. Turn the propeller slowly in the direction of normal rotation until the cylinder reaches top dead center of the compression stroke and both valves are closed. Using a suitable tool, I'm using a rubber mallet, press down on the pushrod side of each rocker arm with a steady force of around 70 newton or 15.7 pounds for 3 seconds. Under force, the distance between the rocker arm 
and the valve stem contact surface must not exceed 0.5 millimeters or 0.02 inches. If you maintain the force, eventually the lifter will slowly bleed down as the oil is forced out. However, if an air bubble is trapped within a lifter, it will feel soft or spongy as the air is compressed. Repeat this inspection procedure on the rocker arms of all cylinders. If any rocker arm exceeds the gap measurement, an additional engine warm-up run for 5 minutes at 3500 RPM can be completed to help purge the trapped air. With all lifters passing inspection, reattach the valve covers using new O-rings. Conduct an engine test run as per aircraft manufacturer's instructions and the respective engine's line maintenance manual. It's recommended that the purging procedure be carried out by an IRMT with current 9 Series service endorsement. Contact your local distributor or their independent service centers for a list of authorized IRMTs in your area. Also, check out course information and training schedules to become an IRMT. Thanks for watching this tech tip video. You can find more videos like this on the official Rotax Aircraft Engines YouTube channel, Fly Rotax.